Hi, Sterling Allen here at the Extraordinary Technology 2011. It is July 29th, and yesterday uh, Vernon Roth gave a very interesting presentation on hydroxy, brown gas, HHO technology, various names for those similar types of processes, and uh, talked about transmutation of elements toward the end, and that really got my interest. Everything he was saying was very fascinating. Uh, he's been a friend of mine for quite a few years. Um, and we, we go back in, in our connections. So it's an honor for me today to uh, do a recording of him. I'm gonna be holding the camera. Uh, we're, we've got a side room here so we can get some quiet. And uh, just gonna be asking him some questions about these technologies and the opportunities that are involved with these technologies. So uh, you can read an interview, or this interview online will be posted at pesn.com and a date close to this one. We'll be posting this to YouTube in however many segments it takes. So uh, here's the interview with Vernon Roth. All right, Vernon, uh, maybe you can just really quick tell us about um, your website and just a thumbnail sketch of a biography of you know what you do and, and where you're coming from. Okay. Well, um, my first website is ancienttech.com. That is my family site to uh, to educate and sell our uh, our products that we developed by researching ancient technology and reproducing in our world. There's different types of elements, different creams that we produced from ancient formulas, and they have healing effects and beneficial effects for the body. So uh, check out ancient tech. That's t e k dot com. Uh, I have another website, and I actually just took control of that again. Um, it was very difficult to change anything or post anything. It's called Alchemical Hydrogen, and that's where a lot of uh, the information that I presented yesterday and the information I'll be talking about will, is actually going to be posted, and I'll have videos up there and such as well, now that I have uh, you know, control of that to, uh, to post up there. And that's the subject that has me most intrigued. Obviously, there's a lot of things we could talk about. You've been involved in hydroxy research for years and uh, have been chasing that dream along with a lot of other people and have been working in uh, concert with other people as well. And have been giving presentations at this Tesla Tech conference for years. Mm -hmm. um, but the alchemical hydroxy or hydrogen is fascinating. If I could recap it briefly, you were talking about taking the hydrogen oxygen um, in the electrolysis process and that somehow the in, in your setup at least, you've been able to replicate the elements that are in the water in solution, whether they're minerals or even chemical. And they actually are replicated 10, 13 times uh, in a given process so you could actually um, like make copies of whatever's in the water using this process. Did I summarize that pretty well? Yes, you summarized that very well. That's what the research is, uh, is showing now. That's, and it's, uh, it's kind of fantastical, um, but that's what we're actually experiencing is this replication of minerals and uh, multiplication. And I, I should tell you too that you're not the only one that says that. I've heard other people really? okay. describe that phenomena, that the stuff that was in the Joe cell, and, and actually I should mention that it's the Joe cell setup using the hydroxy in the Joe cell where this shows up. Um, some research, Peter Stevens I think mentioned that and others. I, I would say that there are at least three other people who have described independently that phenomena. So you were the first person to say that yesterday. That's great. I'm really glad that we have um, independent corroboration in that uh, in that area because that's really exciting. I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. And, and that's one of the reasons why I'm not just rolling my eyes saying I'll wait and see because <laughs> okay. now that I've heard it enough, there's something to this, you know, where there's smoke, yes. there's fire kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And another thing that's exciting about what you're doing is you're willing to um, share this quite openly with people to help them do the same thing. So uh, let's first talk about the kind of the lay of the land, maybe take five minutes and describe how you do this and what's going on, what you have observed, uh, kind of a snippet from your presentation yesterday at the Tesla okay. Tech conference. Well, um, I start with a, an essential uh, hydrogen device that uh, I, I follow the Bob Boyce method of using, uh, of using parallel stainless steel plates 
and I input electricity in certain ratios into the into those plates and I don't use in, in, in for this process I don't use sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide as a catalyst I rely on the natural conductivities of different elements and the water that I work with to be the uh, the conductor of energy and so it's not as efficient as a conventional um, uh, hydrolysis cell but we're not really looking for huge volumes of gas here. What we're looking for is the subtle energies, and that's that's my that's my my passion in the field of research is the subtle etheric energy that we can start to imprint a pattern on and allow it to manifest in the physical reality. And that's really what this comes down to is 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 finding these swirling vortexes of ether, putting a pattern into it, and finding the energy to make it. A physical reality and that's where I believe that that's where the elements are coming from and part of that is the uh, a huge portion of that is the separation of the oxygen and hydrogen and allowing that to recombine so I, I know that there are there are people that experience uh, transmutation of elements in uh, in the hydrogen gas flame but now we're, we're starting to actually see that in the hydrogen uh, chamber <laughs> as well so that's what's really exciting um, <clears throat> My process uses stainless steel plates, and we have to vary the, the, the current and voltage ratios a little bit, but we can talk about the minute of the, uh, of the, the process a little bit later. Um, I use the stainless steel plates and put energy across it, and what happens is elements that are present already in the, in the liquid start to condense and drop out at the bottom of the device. So it's very important that the stainless steel plates are not, are not uh, locked in in a, in, a, in a solid case but actually have room for for liquid to flow around and the elements to fall down in because that's where they they accumulate and then you can draw them off um, as they uh, over time as they develop so that's the basic principle and then i of course i'm, I'm very much uh, safety oriented so i'm not using a, a giant mason jar or something like that i've, I've blown up too many cells <laughs> to uh to play around with plexiglass i use uh, ha half inch to uh, three quarters inch thick uh, PVC pipe and stainless steel plates to hold everything together and so it's very it's a very safe device so uh, that's what I use in particular and then actually instead of using regular electric power from a wall or uh, uh, from, a, from a generator I actually just hook it up to a solar panel and, and, and plug 300 it in. watts right um, yeah, 300 watts will give you about uh, uh, will give you a significant amount of uh, of uh, um, will give you a significant amount of gas production. My first initial experiment, I was getting I was getting 20 liters an hour off of a 45 um, dollar solar panel from uh, from Harbor Freight, and it was only generating in the neighborhood of 100 100 watts or so. So it was kind of exciting. Uh, to, to actually see elements being developed, a usable byproduct of, of hydrogen gas that we can burn later, uh, just coming from the sun with, with uh, the minimum of expenses. So it's really exciting. So describe the process of, of uh, you've got something in solution, a mineral, uh -huh. that is being duplicated. Well, the, my, see, I started, I, I've actually done this in another way. I do it all the time in another way based off of an ancient technology that we discovered. And the, the process is you have a stream of hydrogen and a stream of oxygen gas. And if you have a crystalline matrix of whatever element that you are reproducing uh, to form, and then you have etheric energy, an accumulator that you direct the energy through the crystalline matrix, pattern the ether, and that flows into the hydrogen and the oxygen then you have a spark there to combine that hydrogen and oxygen and because you've just patterned the energy that is there, the hydrogen and oxygen form into the element that you're after. Uh, this kind of flies in the face of conventional physics and... Uh, kind and, of? <laughs> well, okay, it flies in the face of conventional physics, but you know, we're going to discover that we don't really know a whole lot. I mean, even even this last year, conventional physics was turned on its head by a couple of discoveries when they when they uh, learned about the interaction of light and magnetism, and they said, well, and they admitted in the scientific journals, they said we don't understand why this happens. All of our mathematics say that we should be getting X number of energy, but we're getting orders of magnitude higher than that. 
just with the interaction of light and magnets. So conventional physics and, and our conventional understanding of reality is not complete, and anybody who says it is is, uh, is just a little, little arrogant there. <laughs> so we have to understand that there's more to know than, than, than what we know right now, and we have to be open to the information as it comes in. So, uh, and I actually challenge everybody that sees this to, to experiment with this and find out if I'm right, find out if, and, and find out if the other people that are, that are reproducing elements and, uh, and seeing the transmutation are actually correct because I would like to know and I want, to, I, I want the proof out there and I want people playing with it because as we do the experiments, someday conventional science will catch up and this will become commonplace and a hundred years from now or maybe less than that, let's hope, uh, they'll actually use the, uh, use processes or this understanding to uh, to make the things that we need, and we won't have lack, and we won't have to we won't have mining as we understand it now. We will actually use energy to create matter. I mean, we're talking Star Trek technology here, but that's the future, and the people that wrote that were visionaries. So that's my that's my goal. That's what I'd like to see happen. Just conceptually, this is a variation of the three D printing that they're talking about, where you put something into an AutoCAD machine and it'll actually print out a 3D rendering of a device um, that you can then use. It's a practical device. Yes. And absolutely. the difference being that you're not printing uh, something from a set of plans, you're actually on, on a nano or molecular level, you're reproducing a, a given substrate uh, that's, that's, so you, you're, you're making a copy of gold, level. you're making a copy of some expensive mineral or some, some expensive uh, molecule. It doesn't have to be mineral, right? That's right. Um, actually, the way I knew that I was actually reproducing something was I was doing an experiment with an alchemical fluid that I make that, that takes quite a long time to make and, quite, and is quite an intensive process. And when I put that into the machine, and started finding that the fluid was actually coming, that, that more of the fluid was coming off the other end than I started with, and it was stronger and better than what I started with, that's when I knew that I wasn't just reproducing an, a, a single element or a single mineral, I was actually reproducing a complex, uh, it was actually quite a complex reproduction and was not just, uh, was not just limited to a single atom template. So that was very, very exciting for me to, to discover that. Uh, because A, it means that I have a whole lot less work to do in certain areas because it's very difficult to produce that. But also that, that, that gives me a whole new, um, whole new responsibility uh, as we work, well, you know what, that's, that's uh, a, a psycho-spiritual observation that we won't go into here in the technology world. But, um, it's very exciting. It's very exciting to know that we don't just have to, we don't just reproduce a single element. We can actually reproduce complex elements using energy. You described a, a number of 10 to 13 times the amount mm -hmm. of the original substrate being reproduced in this process. Do you want to describe how you came up with that number? Well, that was uh, done by some friends that were doing Joe cell research, and they had the conventional stainless steel tubes. They put in a, a, a mineral toddy, Clark's Minerals, Organa Minerals, there's different types of minerals. Um, they put in a mineral toddy into this, this, uh, this Jocell device, which is a, a very powerful etheric energy accumulator as well as generating hydrogen. And um, they were able to, through a series of, of uh, boiling or generating hydrogen and oxygen, recombining it and, and starting the process all over again, they were able to actually multiply the mineral content by 13 times. Hi, Sterling Allen here at the Extraordinary Technology 2011. It is July 29th and yesterday uh, Vernon Roth gave a very interesting presentation on hydroxy, brown gas, HHO technology, various names for those similar types of processes and I uh, talked about transmitting how many segments it takes. So uh, here's the interview with Vernon Roth. All right, Vernon, uh, maybe you can just really quick tell us about um, 
your website and just a thumbnail sketch of a biography of you know what you do and, and where you're coming from. Okay. Well, um, my first website is ancienttech.com, and that is my family site to uh, to educate and sell our uh, our products that we developed by researching ancient technology and reproducing them in our world. There's different types of elements, different creams that we. Side room here, so we can get some quiet, and uh, just going to be asking him some questions about these technologies and the opportunities that are involved with these technologies. So uh, you can read an interview, or this interview online will be posted at PESN.com. And a date close to this one, we'll be posting this to YouTube. And have a of elements toward the end. And that really got my interest. Everything he was saying was very fascinating. Uh, he's been a friend of mine for quite a few years. Um, and we, we go back in, in our connections. So it's an honor for me today to uh, do a recording of him. I'm going to be holding the camera. Uh, we're, we've got a 